Hey, kia ora. Good morning, Helen Brahms coming to you live from Mesa in Arizona. Hope you're all having a super fantastic sparkling start to your magic Monday. So I thought about today and I thought this is the last Monday of 2020. It would also have been my 22nd wedding anniversary today being the 28th. Um, so happy heavenly wedding anniversary, I guess. Um, but I thought, you know, a lot of people come into Mondays with sort of like, oh, it's Monday. And so that's why I try to make a magic Monday. So I came up with some ways um, that we could put to help us kickstart our week. You know, we're going into a new, we're going to be, you know, we've got four sleeps until the new year. Some people are sort of like, yes, I can't wait for 2021. So like, why wait? Start now. So here, so we're going to get, today we're going to give you eight ways that you can kickstart your week and you can use it to kickstart your year. So um, start putting these things in place now. So when the new year hits in four sleeps, you're already on the ground running. So this week we're going to try and, with each theme of the day, give you things that you can do that you can start today and be ready for when, and, and you're already in motion for when the new year starts. So here we go, eight ways to start your week. So let's start putting these into practice. Most of these I already do, and um, I came up with some others, and I thought, I'm going to add some more ones into my into my week. So number one is plan for fun later in the week. So we have fun Fridays. But you can also plan for other things during the week too. You know, um, do you do anything like, you know, are you able to go out and meet with people in person or rather than meeting people in person, get on Zoom and have a five o'clock, um, you know, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, have a happy hour online. You could do things like that. Um, you know, you've got Fun Friday coming up and we always plan for fun things on Friday. So why not plan it at the beginning of the week instead of getting to Friday and going, oh, what can I do that's fun today? So plan for things later in the week. It could even be something on Saturday or Sunday where you're planning to go to a movie, watch a new movie, you're planning to um, to go on a picnic, um, all sorts of different things that you can plan on during the week that you can, so if you plan it on Monday, now you've got something to look forward to at the end of the week. So you've got that anticipation. Anticipation is really good. It's good for the soul. Um, you can plan, you know, plan your week early. Some people, uh, you know, before you leave the office on Friday, plan your next week. But to me, that's sort of like a little too soon. I actually like to do my planning on Sundays, and the reason I like to do it on Sundays is because Friday is clear the desk. You have nothing on the desk left to do. All my to-do for the week is done. Done, done, done. Then Saturday is sort of like relax, chew it over a little bit. Yes, there might be some things that I might have to do for work just behind in, in the back office type of stuff. Um, and then Sunday is my is my serenity Sunday. It's my day off. But um, a lot of times when I – the reason I do my planning on Sunday – in, for the week ahead is because oftentimes there's stuff that may come up on Friday that you're sort of like, oh, I'll think about that next week. And you take the notes down and jot it into and already put it into your calendar for the following week. Um, but then on Saturday, some inspiration may come. So like, oh, when I do that project next week, I could also do bop, 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 bop. So now you're, you're jotting down ideas over the weekend. So you sit down on Sunday, you plan out the week, and that way you're not having to do it first thing on Monday morning. And I actually did my planning this week on Saturday, which gave me a full Sunday off. Although I did take a business call on Sunday, which I don't typically do. And it ended up in me getting a new two-hour contract um, for a, um, um, a freelance, a two hour, yeah, two hour, me getting a two hours of work. So that wasn't so bad, but um, it was sort of like, okay. And I had, pl and because I had already planned my week, I know exactly when in the week that that two hours is going to get done. Um, Create a morning routine. This is so, so important. Um, if you're getting up in the morning and you're racing around and um, and you don't have that morning routine, a lot of stuff can get forgotten. And then later in the day, you're like, oh, I forgot to do this. And now you're stressing out for the rest of the day. Have a set morning routine. Even on Saturday and Sunday, we have a morning routine. Um, it's the same routine every morning. <laughs> and um, so when you're doing your morning routine, it's it gets you into the habit of, Okay, and I find, and I also have a, a bedtime routine as well. So I have a get up in the morning routine, and I have a bedtime routine. This way, my bedtime routine, because my brain is constantly going all over the place, when I get into that bedtime routine, my body knows and my brain knows. Oh, it's sleep time. We have to start winding down, and that helps a lot because now I'm lately I've been getting into bed, and my body has sort of like gone, oh, we're into that night routine. Okay, well it's it's time to go to sleep. But I also know my body and I know that if I don't do at least read a paragraph in a book 
that my brain is not going to shut down. It's going to stay awake and I'm going to have, and I'll wake up and, and if I do manage to get to sleep, I'll wake up and I'll be awake for hours and have to read anyway. So I make sure I get that reading time in, but I'm now finding that I get past that first page and my eyelids are starting to droop already. And it's like, damn, I just want to read a chapter. And <laughs> sometimes I will force myself to finish the chapter and other times I'm just sort of like, I'm done. And I'll put the Kindle aside, turn over and go to sleep. Um, but my body knows it's a routine. It's the same thing in the morning. We wake up the same way every day. When that, if if I should wake up bef before the alarm goes off, it's turn the alarms off, get up, get moving, um, and I have my routine of showering and getting dressed, taking Zeffy for a walk. Although we go for a walk at a certain time because now she's got certain dogs that come to the that that may come to the dog park during that time that we're there, and she gets to play. So now she's got um, a set time for play dates. So we work around that. You know, getting our breakfast and getting our morning meditations and that sort of thing, exercise, that sort of stuff. Um, so create that morning routine. Um, another thing I do each morning is write down in my journal five things that I'm grateful for every day. Um, and five things, and I try to make them different from the previous day. And so I'm always looking for different things. But you can, in that morning routine, you can list things that you're grateful for because always begin every day with a grateful heart. You've got meditation in there, you can do exercise in there, you can do your breakfast, you know, get your coffee up and going. Um, if you've got an automatic coffee, make, coffee, coffee? Coffee? What's a coffee? Coffee maker. <laughs> Just shortened it to coffee. So coffee is a coffee maker. Um, <laughs> if you have the automated coffee maker, then you can set the time. And most of you probably do that anyway. If you're the big caffeine junkie, you're going to have your cup of coffee in the morning to get going. Um, purge your email. Um, I get so many emails coming in every day that I actually now, um, I've got... In Gmail, you can filter messages and send them directly to different um, mail, uh, different um, folders. In Outlook, you can do the same thing. And so I try and get all my emails sorted because there are some email that I don't need to see every single day. There's some I just need to go and glance at like once a week. Um, in some cases, once a month. When um, when the travel when my travel business was up and fully running, I would go and the only I would have. Um, I have all my emails going into vendor folders. So there was all the cruise lines had their own folder and the emails would automatically go in there. The problem was that once the global pause started is they started changing the email addresses so my inbox started getting filled up so I had to start going and recreating all the rules, which was okay. Um, they just got thrown in there. And the only time I actually look at those folders, <laughs> I will go in once a week and glance through those folders to see what's the update that they need me to know this week, what promotions do they have going out there, is there anybody who I, is there a client I have that likes sailing on that particular cruise line that I can tell them about this promotion? Um, so once a week I go, I just glance through those and then once a quarter I go in and I delete everything in that, in that box. So purge your emails, have the auto sorts. So those emails that you don't need to see every day, that you only need to see like once a week or something, get put into a folder. If it's something that, that you sort into a folder and you find you're never looking at it, that there may be just one nugget of information in there, and but you very rarely look at the folder, unsubscribe from the email. Make it easy so you're not getting that thing. Um, the other thing I try to do every day is have a zero inbox. So I take I check my email twice a day um, unless I am waiting for a specific email to come back from a client or a vendor. Um, I do I have time set on my calendar twice a day, morning and in, in, in the afternoon, to go in and check my email. There's um, a 30 minute window in the morning and an hour in the evening. And that's my time when I am responding to emails. Unless I'm waiting for a specific email from a client, um, then I'll go and check like around lunchtime and then again at the end of the day. Um, but usually it's twice a day and I go in and um, and deal with it. But the idea is to get the mailbox down, the inbox down to zero. Um, and some people are going, my inbox down to zero, I have 13,427 emails in there. Yeah. Do you really need 13,427 emails in your inbox? You could probably put the, sort them all into folders and do it that way. Um, so that's a way. That, and so twice a day, you're actually purging through your email. You're going through yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Um, having an action folder. Um, Gmail allows you to set up snoozes on your emails. Um, and Outlook allows you to do follow-ups. So you can set times. You can add those emails to to-do list, add it to your to-do list, and snooze it. So that it will pop back up in your inbox with a little thing next to it that says snoozed um, six days ago or something like that. That reminds you, oh, I've got to go do that. But you've already got it written on your to-do list. Um, connect with a friend, five to ten minutes, non-business. It could be a friend you haven't spoken to for a while. It could be 
um, a friend you need to reconnect with. It could be a friend that you're just, you know, they're going through a tough time, so you're just checking in on them. But it's a non-business call, and it's just five to ten minutes to say, hey, just thinking of you, just checking in to see how you're doing. Um, goal set for the week. I have, <laughs> oh, I'm going to show my little basket here. This is, just take that cup out of there, don't need that in there. All right, so this is my little basket. And my little basket has my highlighters, my pens, and as you can see, they're all different. And the color of the pen is the color of the ink. So, and then I have my post-its. But what I do every week is I take my post-its. It doesn't matter which color I, I, might, I change colors each week. <laughs> but I take a post-it pad, I take three post-it notes, and I write on here three things, one post-it note per, thing, per item that have to be done that week. They have to be done that week. And that is, those are my goals to get those three important things done that week. Yes, I have my to-do list, but these become my most three important things. They actually sit um, in my planner. See, I actually have a planner. I haven't done my three post-it notes for the week, but I have my planner. And they sit there on my planner. So they are big. And this is this is a week, is it? this is a week to two pages. So a week to two pages. And so um, this is where the to-do list stuff goes. So I've got to write, I've got my master to-do list and the stuff will get written in there today of what's going in where and I will actually schedule into the calendar. These post-it notes, I do three of these with three things that absolutely have to be done that week. And I could use purple, I could, oh, let's take that one off there. Um, I can use bright pink, but I try and use a bright color so it captures it so there on my face. So I'm sort of always seeing that pink, I mean, Try, try ignoring this color, really. Um, it's bright and it's obnoxious. <laughs> so that's my little post. And that's not all my post-its. Everybody knows I love post-its. I actually have a basket of post-its in one of the drawers underneath one of the bench seats here. Um, so I never run out of post-its. That, that, that could be a life-threatening situation if Helen runs out of post-its, like if Helen runs out of chocolate. Um, <laughs> so um, I use those post-it notes three, I schedule them into my calendar, and as soon as each one is done, it's screwed up and thrown out. So by the time I get to Friday, there should be no post-it notes sitting in my planner um, of things to do. Um, pay it forward with kindness. You know, are you out doing grocery shopping and somebody's got a few items there, do you pay for their groceries? Do you hold a door open for somebody? Do you, um, you're in line at a Starbucks, or you're going through a drive through and you want to pay for the meal behind you? Um, I've done that a few times, and the looks you get from the people who are serving you, you know, you've heard that person's behind you, so you know that they've ordered because they're away from the speaking thing. And you turn around and say, oh, and you give them, the, give them your card and say, yep, run that for that. I said, oh, also, can you please run my card again and pay for the for the meal for the vehicle behind me? And they're like, what? I said, I want to pay for whatever the person behind me, immediately behind me, has ordered. And they're like, what? And I'm like, seriously, some people just don't get it. But going through a drive through it's very easy to pay for the meal for the person that's in the car behind you. So go do something like that. Um, pay it forward with kindness, with no expectation of return. And then the last thing to help get you kick-started on your weekly, on your brand new week, which is a magic Monday, is to do something inspirational. It could be reading an inspirational quote. Um, I usually have books around me. They're probably in my little box down here, so I'm not going to go digging right now. But I have books that I can go to. I have websites that I can go to. Um, I get an email every day, which is a quote of the day. So you just have that quote that inspires you. I have my stick-ups all around that have different quotes and things on them. Um, you could go um, read an inspirational story if you have a favorite website that you like that is full of inspirational stories. It could be reading something out of Chicken Soup for the Soul. We haven't done that for a while, have we? Hmm, have to get back to doing that. Or go watch a 15-minute TED, was it 15, 20-minute TED Talk? So just find some inspiration that way to help your Monday. So the eight ways that you can plan to start your week is plan for fun later in the week. Um, plan your week early, like on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. I prefer a Sunday. Create a morning routine that you do every single day, even on the days that you are off. Um, purge your email every day. Go for a zero inbox every day. Um, connect with a friend for five to ten minutes that's non-business related. Goal setting for the week with the three post-it notes. Pay it forward with kindness and read something inspirational or watch something inspirational. Read or watch something inspirational to help get started. Those are the eight things that we have for you today to start your week. So go have a super fantastic sparkling magic Monday. And um, oh, what's some of the things that you, that's that's a, that's a, oh, that's a good, it just popped into my head. 
What are some of the things that you do on a Monday to help you get a good start to the week? Please let us know in the comments below because we could add them to the list. Yay! Always looking for new inspirational things to do. Um, so have a super fantastic Sparkling Magic Monday and we will catch you guys later today. Hey Konora.